Alrighty, just cleaning up a bit here. Push the, the frame table outside. This is just, uh, I don't know what you call that, uh, the H pattern, I guess. H channel, I beam, I beam, I guess. Um, what it's done is just weld it together to make a flat surface to build a car from. And what, it, what it's good for is that you can tack it down to keep it in place so it does not move around for you. And I learned that in the last couple years, you know, to bolt it, get it, get it welded down, tack it down, and get it in place and go from there. Because you really can get it crooked. And ask yourself, how do I know? Because <laughs> I've done it before. But anyways, just getting that aside is nice. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a start that you should have if you're building something from scratch, which like I do. Um, if you're building a car that already has a chassis and that sort of stuff, you should be fine. Um, anything that you do to it, I just wouldn't cut the chassis apart until you make the piece and put it on, then cut all your stuff off so it stays where it's at. That right there, I can weld it to it and it will stay right there. So I'm, I'm just getting some stuff ready to go to what I've got going on is the air station, John's air station has a bunch of little pieces that I want to hang up. And uh, this is what I this is what I have done. Come with me, baby. Come with me. On the side of the road on your cleanup day, you usually get those swings. You know, you can swing back and forth. Me and Jolene can look good on a swing with me, baby. <laughs> uh, that's what I've done. I've taken the swing and, and chopped it off and put a piece of exhaust pipe in the middle of it, and then tacked a bunch of washers on it so I can put pieces on it to paint and it's always needed is something to hold something to paint it right now the gas pump is on the ground I do not or the air station is on the ground I don't want to paint on the ground I'll have to get it up off the ground but this is good for the little pieces that you paint and this is the things that you have around or I have around to help me get that done and uh, it's, it's light let's face it we can hang it outdoors you put it inside outside and I need it in the paint room right at the present moment because I'm going to start priming some pieces. station there. I'll put something over top, over top of that. So we've got it all filled out. We've got all the brass nuts taken out. We replace them with smaller ones so we can prime it with it together. And there. So I can hang all my pieces on there. You've got leftover water that's been hanging stuff and you can spray it. And that's just as easy as grabbing a swing in the junk pile and putting a piece of exhaust pipe onto it. So right now, I'm on this right here. The old, she's been broke on the top. And what I've been doing is I've been playing with that. Your Jolene's been playing with that and I'm playing with that. And I've also been mudding out the 40, trying to keep, trying to get the welds covered with, with uh, the fiberglass filler. I cleaned it all back up with the drill and got the rust off it. And that's basically what I'm doing it for because I want to get the rust off it and try to going forward instead of going backwards a little bit. So in a mix, doing the, the air station and doing the 40, that's exactly what I'm doing. What a beautiful day, what a beautiful day. Wow. Just had a friend in from Liverpool and uh, he was asking me about the car show this year. I don't, I don't know. Um, all I know is that things are messed up I don't think that I have to explain it to anybody, but to here in Nova Scotia, the safest place in the world, where we have 100 people infected, 200 people infected, and uh, we are, you know, we're, we're locked down. But you, you turn on the old tube and it blows my mind. Like, I just don't know where we're at. Like, it just, it doesn't seem that we're all on the same page. It does not seem like we're all on the same page. I don't understand why people, some people believe and some people, whatever, but it's just weird. Why, I don't know why it has to be so weird nowadays. All I know is, all I know is I'm going to keep on building. I'm going to build some of the green car. You know what I'm saying? But, you know.
you know, when he asked me about the car show, it kind of, kind of bummered me a little bit because it doesn't, wow. Anyways, I'm gonna put some fiberglass on that first just because, no, I'm not, I'm not gonna put fiberglass on that first. I don't have to. This has been all JD welded together and uh, welded together as a cast. Um, and it just needs to be smoothed off to make it look nice. It has some numbers on the top there. I'm gonna to try to leave them alone, that's for sure. Leave the numbers alone and put some mud on the rest. And always remember, it's, it's easier to put more product on, or not say easier, but it's, it's nicer to put more product on than it's needed so you have enough to work with. And what I've done is I've done the exact same thing one of the exact same thing. Yeah, all the, all the welds I've done, the fiberglass filler, and then put the mud on the top. This one here has already been fixed with a JD weld. And I'm just gonna put mud on the top. This is a air station, not a car that's gonna be driven in the weather. This is an air station. away from that number that will just tell it would probably show authenticity that number probably does that's what it probably shows and if anybody ever takes it apart or or you know whatever that would show the number of the part the day you ordered it or whatever that's what I'm guessing Yeah, it would be nice that we could have a car show this year. It would be nice, but uh, I am not going to have one if it's going to offend everybody. But we all should most certainly try to get on the same page. If we're not on the same page, it's just it's just an ongoing foolishness, really, to be honest with you. And it would. should be one message, not a whole bunch of different messages, if you know what I'm saying. That, that way there people can deal with one message and not, not a whole bunch of messages. My opinion. That's looking nice, isn't it? Huh? Cake Boss hired me on, wouldn't he? Huh? Cake Boss hired me on. And that's just as simple as getting this. And what I've been doing is filling a little bit of this, a little bit of that each time. As this one dries, I can go over to the car and spread some mud on that. And go forward from there. I just really want to try to get, didn't mix enough mud up. See, now I've got to go back in and take more time. I would have made just a little bit more. See, now I've got to go back and do this process, which takes me time. And then once I get that mudded out, I'm just using mud on that because... It's, it's only, it only needs mud, you know? We're, it's the top of an air station. Let's get real. We want to smooth it out and we want to put some paint on so it looks good. But on the car, I always do the, the fiberglass first. We went over and got some more truck parts today. Neil was very nice again. He gave us the papers to it and everything. The trucks, I don't know, but the truck's talking to me like it should go back together. <laughs> That's what it's talking to me. That's what it's telling me. A little more on, just in case. Do, 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 do. It's, we got the doors open today, so you can tell what kind of day it is. It's 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 trying here in Nova Scotia. It's really trying because you have four months of winter and probably four months of whatever you could expect. And then you probably have another four months or a couple months of good weather, you know? And uh, it's trying here because we don't always have that sunshiny weather that's supposed to make you feel good. We don't have that here. So I guess maybe that's why, uh, I guess that's why I got stuck in the grass and, and, and became good at what I was doing, this body work stuff. I guess that's what got me here is to 
You know, Nova Scotia is a place where you have to pick up something to do. If you don't, you can drive yourself into what? It's a, it's a hard place to live, you know, when, it's, when you wake up and it's not shiny all the time, it's sunny. It's a hard place. It makes it trying. And then you put everybody, you scare everybody. And then you got, you know, I'm not scared myself, but I do think of other people. It's just a trying time. I would suggest today, today is Sunday, is it not, baby? Mm -hmm. I would just suggest today, if possible, if possible, do something nice for somebody. You know, whether they expect it or whether they don't expect it, do nice, something nice for somebody today. Jolene did something nice for me this morning. She woke up and said, I'm taking you out to breakfast. And the way we went, and uh, I appreciate that, baby. And Buddy, Buddy just has given us a 79 Ford. He should feel good about himself today because we appreciate it. Because not many people do that sort of stuff. So, you know, as the trying times we are having and the things I don't understand. Just keep moving. Think the best of it, I guess. Think the best of her. Put it in perspective. There's a lot worse going on. Huh, baby? We'll put it in perspective. I mean, I got a lot of fill on this. Ooh, that's nice. That's nice. Put that on my finger. I'm not scared to put it on my finger. That way there, I know it's on there. Leave the numbers alone. We want the numbers. I wonder if the cake boss uses his fingers. <laughs> Think he does? I doubt it. <laughs> Making sure we get enough there. The edges are always seem to be the hardest because it's hard to keep the product on the edge, if you know what I'm trying to say. On the edge. We're going to go with that. And if I would have done it in one mixing, I'd been done by now and onto that car. So that, that kind of shows you, or tells you, <laughs> does it not, it shows the difference between mixing the right amount and not mixing the right amount, or having enough or not having enough, how to slow you down. Because to be honest with you, I had to mix more up. I put, go to, down there and do that again. I could have done it the first time by mixing a little bit more, and I did not. Um, I could have been on scuffing the fiberglass off and putting mud on that. Um, where I, you know, that just tells you how, it can, how you can become faster. That just proves it to you right there. And it's the second time I put it on there. I could have been putting it on there if I would have mixed the right amount. And that's the game that, that's the game that I try to play as I'm doing this because you can become faster if you play that game. This is where Jolene, well, the running board on, I just took and leaned out the, the fiberglass filler so it ran on smooth like that. That's all I did. I generally don't like sanding fiberglass. I generally say not to do that, but I am on a round. There's no other real choice, you know. There's no choice! How do you know when to stop sanding? When you see the ocean floor. That's when I stop sanding. See a little ocean floor there. See a little ocean floor there, some metal there. That's when I have to stop sanding.
trying to tighten this up a little bit before I should say I'm done with it. I like to keep it sort of like a, a drywaller when I'm doing this stuff. And when I say what I mean by drywaller is I mean I like to do one side at a time. So if I was going up to do a corner, I'd do this side and leave it. I wouldn't try to do this side and both sides of the corner. I, like, I generally like to do one corner. So if I come down here, I try to finish this and then I go onto this. More or less what I'm trying to say. I'll do all the way along here before I start going in here. Just kind of simplifies it, I guess. If you start putting mud on here and mud up in there, it makes it more difficult. This metal was sanded before I started. You can see how it's all scratched up and sanded. That's what I did. Get a little piece of metal in there. I'm going to tear that off. Now what I'm going to do is mix the mud up and throw it over top of that. Then I can allow my good sunglasses up here. Then I can allow that mud to dry. Maybe while I come out and finish sanding the hood or whatever. Just back and forth, back and forth. All of the game is to get enough filler to go all the way. I might have enough. I'm not sure. That's the name of the game right there. If I have to do it twice, I already showed you what happens. It takes more time. I have to do it again. The less times you have to run to make filler, the faster you can become. I'm going to put it on and then lay it out. And it's always good to have more than you need. I, I, I stress that so much because you, I'm not going back in for anything, I'm not going back in for more fill, and also you have the product to work with. I'm going to say that I work, mix, mixed up the perfect amount, is what I'm going to say. And the reason I'm going to say that is because I have enough to cover it all. Ah, what's more up there? I want to make sure I cover the fiberglass. That's the name of the game, cover that fiberglass. All we are doing is trying to cover that weld up that was there. And you'd have to do this, no matter if you taped it, <laughs> migged it, or bronzed it. You still have to fill it out. Without a doubt. Without a doubt, you have to fill it up.
Check for pinholes. that so I'm happy with that I got it in one coat happy with that it's kind of a harder spot to hard spot to fill but I'm happy with it You see, I put fiberglass here where we weld it together, and you can see where I'm hitting the ocean floor, so I cannot go no further than that. Um, up here, it was pretty basic, just lay the fill on, try to get it fitting the best I could. On the hood, I fiberglassed all the edges where it was welded, and then I mudded the whole thing. I flooded it all, and I stopped when I hit the ocean floor. So we know basically how, how thick that is. Not very. So we'll go from there. I'm gonna mix a little bit up. I got some lumps, I got some mud puddles. Come, come take a look at this. You want to? See them are mud puddle low spots. I'm gonna fill them in. I'm not saying I'm gonna use all that fill that's there, but I have got metal right here, but I have to put a little more filler on that to make it look better. I might put a little filler on the center already, not much. It's a second coat, but uh, we'll put a little bit on that. And then by the time I'm done that, I probably can go to the bell Put a little more on here, maybe I might. I might put a little more on this situation, maybe. Just more up. take all my time, get mud on everything, and then, this, and then just go sanding. Um, I know when to stop or what's wrong because I can tell when I hit the ocean floor, and the only way I sand anything is holding the, holding the DA flat, so generally, you, you'll figure it out as you go. You start somewhere, start sanding, get it nice and flat, and then you've hit the ocean floor, then you know you have to move on. Have to move on. My squeegee, you can tell, is not the smoothest. You can see the lines in the squeegee. It's not the smoothest. But I'm going to have to blame that on me. Better to have more than not enough. I, I go by that and live by that. Out in the sun, if you're outside, this stuff reacts differently, quicker. Anything that has to be have more mud on it, and I have not welded it up yet, I weld it up and then just grind the mud out and redo it again. I like to have the mud on there for insulation for when you weld something. Hey, you know, it's true. I, I like to have it on there. This is just pinholes. Can you explain what you mean by the ocean floor? All right. All right. I'm going to explain by the ocean floor. What, ha what happens is, is the car, the metal of the car is the ocean floor. When... When you fill something out or weld on it, um, weld on it, put a piece in it, or 
whatever, distort it, scratch it, dent it, fix it. Um, you have to fix it so you cannot tell. So when you fix it and you put this mud on top of it, um, you are, I, what I call, you are flooding it. And what I mean by flooding it, it means that you're covering it with a, you're covering it with Bondo, you're flooding the whole thing. And, and you, when you flood it, you are trying not to see the ocean floor, what you have welded and the piece that you have put in. So when you flood the whole thing, you want, a, you want the flood to cover the ocean floor. You do not want to see the ocean floor. Um, when you come down here in Kingsport, when the tide's in, it's beautiful. When the tide goes out, the ocean floor is visible. It's not that nice. When you cover your piece that you've put in your car, your patch, you, cover, you flood it with body filler or fiberglass, and you flood it so you do not see the ocean floor. When you see the ocean floor, you have to stop because you cannot go any further. And the reason you're putting the mud on is because the ocean floor does not look that good. So that's why you are flooding it to make it smooth like glass. You cannot go any further than the ocean floor once you are fixing something or flooding something because that's what you are trying to make look smooth. So just picture the ocean floor with no water in it and then picture the ocean floor flooded with water just as smooth as you can see. Uh, when it's wavy, that means the wind's blowing, it does not look that good anymore. And that's, what, that's where the mud puddles are in it. That's what this, um, we call them waves when there's not enough water or not enough mud to flood the floor. I guess that's how I can explain it the best I can, sort of, without wind, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So let's, let's go over this here. Do I go like this here? This would be the ocean floor. I want to flood it from there to there so you do not see it anymore. I do not want it wavy with the ocean coming in and ruffles and muffles. I want it flooded so it's smooth all the way across. And I cannot go any further than the ocean floor when I'm sanding it. And you'll see where it's wavy because it will not be sanded if you're holding your uh, your DA or sanding block nice and flat. You will not, you will notice where the waves are. So what you're trying to do is make it flood it all out so there's no imperfections other than what you want to see is a beautiful ocean floor, a beautiful car. Stand this off real quick. Ah, you can't fool me. And I got this where it's half soft, half hard. And this is a piece of used paper. Take off the scummy stuff. So basically we're out here Sunday trying to get trying to get things done, you know, just trying to get things done. That's what we always do. We were over town already, picked up some Ford parts. Thank you one more time, Neil. Thank you. And if this doesn't say ring my bell, I don't know what does. <laughs> hey, hi, hi, baby. So we're gonna try to get the, the subscribers up as much as we can before we start the car. Um, I'm thinking all the time, I have not set my, my goals set or not set in stone yet when I'm planning on building. But I will tell you this, I'm planning on building something that no one else has. Um, unless you hired somebody and got them with the same vision I have to build something. And that's basically what it is. And um, I'm not going to build, yeah, I'm going to build something you've never seen before. And that's where I'm going to keep it. And uh, I want to build something that... Anybody in the right mind would want. <laughs> if not, it's, it's going to be a piece of art, that's for sure. And it's going to be a piece of art like you've never seen before. And there will be ups and downs. Some people will enjoy, some people will not. I am not going to make a half ton truck. I am not going to chop a 40 Ford. I mean, it's all been done. I'm not going to, I'm going to build you something you've never seen before. And I hope that we can do it in classy style. I hope so.
It's hard to believe all that stuff that matters, you know, whether you come over and put one coat on or two coats on, how long it takes you, isn't it? It's hard to believe the time that is the difference, you know, the, the, the time is the difference. There's a difference. From a sharper piece of paper right there. What grit? What's that? What grit? 40 grit. We always start with 40 on the old filler, generally. 40 and then we go to a, to an 80. You know what happens after that? The old priming gun comes out. And then we go, oh, look at that, see now, pick that up on that edge, she holding it on my lap, rip that off. Damn it! Had to rip it off, because it fell off. And do it again. Right? If I rip it off, well, that's what happened. Having too much hanging on there, right? Yeah, so notice what we have in here is something. I think what we'll do up here, inside this piece here, there's some silicone in there or something that probably is not sandblastable, well, sandblastable, but you just waste your time. We'll clean this up with a 40 grit in here. We'll probably throw a little rock guard in there, texture it, it's got the broken places where you can see where it's broke. And uh, that's what we'll do with that. Now I just gotta sand these edges off because I pulled it off on my lap. That's not what I wanna do. Yeah, we'll rock there by underneath it. There we go. I have to fix that again. I'll rub that off by hand too on that. I'll do that by hand. Yeah. Electric DA. <whistles> nope. What's that? It's over there. No, I'm not gonna use it. Hey, I'm just gonna use it. I'm gonna continue on, just continue on. What I'm gonna do is continue on. So I might not even need that there, but I put it on anyway, because it is. That's basically what we're doing. So hopefully I can sand this all off and get it with one more, one more coat. Fix that side piece, one more coat. Sand the inside of it. It'll be the rock garden last. She's coming boys, she's coming. Trying to get, there's a wave down, but the ocean floor is not smoothed off yet. 
and the ways would be considered the places that are low, and the flood is the places that are looking good, and the ocean floor is not looking so hot. That's why we're sanding it. Right? I know this is not, you know, something that you need to watch every day or see, but this is <laughs> the truth of the process. You know, this is the truth of the process right here. How fast you can sand it and put it on to get it off is to get the job done. I wish I didn't knock that off, but it did. bell done and get the running board done. Fine. Right. I'll get back on the running board so I want to finish this first. Right? I know it's not, you know, but this is what we're doing. I'm going to try to finish that first. Run this over here. And then I'll go right onto the running board and see how fast I can do the pair of these. And uh, that'll be the day. time I'll turn it upside down do the edge I don't think I had it pressed on really good because I was going down like this I didn't really probably press the filler on that good Does that makes sense I'm all baby
You're the same man of love that's got to go in these things and it doesn't care, you know. Exact same, exact same process is going to happen. It'll let you know when to stop sanding when you hit the ocean floor. I still got product on there. So I'm still taking it off. This goes on the very top. You're not going to see it, <laughs> but you are. You're going to see the top of it. Yeah. I'm going to sand that around there so it goes to, so it does go down to the. Well, they may as well do it. Right this present second. No time like the present. Sand that down. You can tell that the filler's not that hard yet because it knocks it, the 40 takes it off quite quick. Also, this is cast iron, and I would say that it has something little to do to it. I tried to scratch it with the, the grinder, and it's just as hard as hard can be. And I just want to get all, that, all the waves out of there. That's basically what I'm looking for. Get in there. And when we come back in to feather that, we'll feather it with an 80. A little, a little less grit. Do, 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 do. Just going for that, that wavy stuff. That's all I'm going for. Take too much off, that's for sure. I want to get down to the metal like that and start scraping. I want it to cover. I want it to cover. Because I hit metal around it, I'm stopping. And you can be in, is I don't want to scrape it off like up there. So this here I'll feather with an 80 grit. This here I'm gonna sand in here with an 80 grit or a four, or 40 grit, I'll sand that in there with 40 grit. I probably may even have to fill her a little bit by the looks of things. Then I will rock guard the inside of that and give it that texture. Um, yeah, it's a hard rough texture on the inside because this is cast. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do is I'm going to rock guard the inside texture of it and I'll flatten the inside. What I wanna do right this present moment 
And so I want to get some fill back on the edges where it come off. And uh, I just need to make a little bit up, stick some on, and then I can go to that. Kevin! Yeah! Life is good. Just a little weird. <laughs> and what do you mean by weird? Well, you have to figure that out for yourself, but it's weird. It's weird. Mix her up here nice and good so you know all the colors through it. is probably not the best thing that the bond way to stick to, but um, it's not getting beaten up or anything. It's getting restored. What I'm going to do is try to make a little layer around the whole edge of this so the lip can't fall off. If you know what I'm saying, there's lips of, there's lip of body fill there. I don't want lip off. thing to deal with is the lips. Making me, making me work for it to get it all the way around, isn't it? Making me work for it. I'm gonna say we got it by the skin of her teeth. Got it. So we'll smooth that off with, with that right there like that. I'm gonna smooth that off with an 80 grit. That's how I'll finish it. I'll finish it with an 80 grit. That way there I won't rip into the, the, the bond or into the bondo too far and then rip it off that cast. It's just really hard to set up on. And now I'm gonna take another piece of sandpaper. I'll bust that off. See how that looks. Already seen the biggest one. Starting to stir what we got going on there already. Knocking it off. Pretty hard to stand this with anything other than your hands. I have to be very careful on this. 
as I feed the exhaust pipe is doing the exact same thing as the cast iron did, it's ripping off easy. You have to be careful. Setting up on it. Oh, there we go. When I come back here, because there was a piece on the on the float, it didn't look good. It had a wave in it. That's a wave when it looks like that. When it's down, you see no mud in it. It's a wave. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Jolene welded this running board up, and right now I'm filling it to make it look like it should. Let me care. What I'd like to do, after I get this rounded off, I'm gonna take a, the DA with a 80 grit and feather the top part off. This might up here, feather that off. Then we could call that Pretty well done. Let's switch around here for a minute. Before I do this, I'll take a little grinder, just take the edges off, make it smoother. Pretty well basically got that. Da, 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 da. I want a it feathered there. It's an 80 grit this one. I want to do another giveaway at the end of the video. Jolene's gonna do another giveaway. I'll buzz the top of that off with an 80 grit to show you how how that should look, because I haven't got the top done yet. Good. And the cord. If nothing else, if nothing else, these videos get me to do something. I'm saying so I, I find it hard to stop to stop doing it or not do it because we need to do it we need to work we need to work man. I'm sending these off
You have the computer ready? No way he's gonna get the computer ready and film me. <laughs> so I'm just gonna take a quick rub up here just to show you what it should look like. You don't have to do that because I'll get ready for you in a second here. Go on here. And then Is I'm trying to run back and forth, trying to do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, picking up Ford trucks, <laughs> and now we're gonna draw for another half. Let's do it. Blow off your phone. Good job with the run boards there, darling. Thanks. Well, that nice. Not much fill on those, is there, baby? Huh? Nope. Ooh, so I'm going to do it from yesterday's video. We're going to do it from yesterday's video. So what you have to do is you have to comment where the, on the, not on the live chat, on the YouTube chat or the YouTube station. Yeah. And that way there you'll enter it as a and prize we're gonna, winner. We're going to try to do giveaways randomly. Try to do it. Okay. Every, every day or every other day. Or every day or every other day, we want to. We want to try to grow our station. So I guess that's what we're trying to do. So every day we're going to try to give a giveaway. It'll be on the comments that are left on the YouTube station, not on live chat. Well, let's face it. We value our live chatters. That's for sure. Just. Um, I think to grow a page, it has to be on the YouTube station itself. Okay. Not sure. Alright, I'm gonna do it. What's that? I'm ready to do it. Alright, she's ready to rock and roll. She's gonna, she's pressing it now. BH. Put that truck back together. It could be a beauty of a shop truck. And you are so right. It could be. We're, he was, uh, Neil was saying that this morning. He said, I'd like to see you put it back together and use it as a shop truck. We might. You never know. We, we might. But anyways, thanks for watching. Comment. Ring my bell. Go to the Hilts Auto page and buy some gear. Support, support, support. And we will try to continue our support by giving out something free every, every other day for the videos. And um, basically what I'm showing today is just because I put a little fill on that, doesn't mean I can't go over there and put a little fill on that and come back to that and go back to that to get more done. That's for the young people. Have, get at her, get at her, get at her.